What's going on guys, JPS back with another video and today we're going to be reacting to why American buses are just worse. Now, when we talk about public transportation in the United States, it can be a bit like the lottery. And if you know anything about the lottery, you lose almost all the time and that's how it is here. Like public transportation in this country is, it can be a bit iffy. You know, there's a city here and there that has built a pretty robust metro system, but when it comes to buses, in my experience, they're rarely on time. Sometimes they don't even come at all. And it's really not ideal to have to rely on uh, a metro bus or your city's local bus or whatever to have reliable transportation to where you want to be. So I don't know why this is or how this became the case. So today we're going to get into that. I'm really curious. There's actually a decent amount of Americans, I'm sure, who have, aside from a school bus, never rid a uh, road a public transportation bus like uh, outside of school because it's, it's just really not practical in many situations and a car is the optimal solution unfortunately but with that being said hit the like button hit subscribe if you want to and let's get right into this buses have a really bad rap in north america less so in canada but it's still a thing and i don't like it now, of course, there are a lot of reasons for this, but one of the biggest reasons, and one that I think gets discussed far too little, is that the buses here in Canada and the United States are just worse than our international counterparts. But why? And how? And could yeah. we do something to fix this? If you like videos about how soft the seats on buses are, you should visit Toronto recently. We took a ride, naturally, on one of Toronto's newest and nicest buses. It was a hybrid delivered just a few years ago, and to be honest, they were amazed. Why is the ride so rough? The bus is rattling <laughs> so much, is it going to fall apart? Why do the wayfinding screens look like they were designed in the 1970s? Oh my goodness, the seats are so hard. I must say the comments startled me a little, but it did remind me of when I first moved to Toronto, where the buses felt notably less nice and rougher than those I was used to in Vancouver. But Vancouver isn't bus heaven. If you want to truly see what buses can do, a trip to Europe, Latin America, or Asia makes a ton of sense. Oh, and I should probably also say I'm likely going to say North America in this video at some point, but in this case, sorry Mexico, you don't count, your buses are too good. Now a big part of why I think transit buses are probably so much better in much of the rest of the world is that there are just so many more brands competing. For example, MAN, VDL, Volvo, Hess, Scania, and indeed even Mercedes. Yes, all of these years you could have been riding on a Mercedes-Benz Citaro bus. Now you know. From these many brands, you'll see a ton of cool features. But what I'd actually argue you see the most of is a diversity of different buses. Currently in North America, bus manufacturers seem to be trying to pare down their offering. In fact, Vancouver recently ordered Nova Bus Suburban models, which are just city buses with one less door and bad seats, meant to be used on routes where coach buses are the correct answer. By comparison, in the rest of the world, you've got everything under the sun. You have the usual two axle city buses and articulated buses, but you also have longer 14 and 15 meter buses with three axles. More capacity than a regular city bus, but less than an articulated. There are also four axle articulated bus variants. Oh, and you can also see bi-articulated buses in Europe and Latin America, with not just one, but two bendy bits. In fact, some models even look like trams, which is all the more reason the autonomous bus rapid transit gadget bond from China is not a big deal. Meanwhile, despite the US and Canada having more road space than almost any other countries in the world, there is not a single double bendy boy to be found here. It's also common in the rest of the world to see buses with more doors. I talk a lot about this with trains, but it still holds true with buses. More doors mean people can get on and off of a vehicle more quickly, which makes your route faster and more pleasant. But in the US and Canada, 99.9% .9 of regular city- It's always just front and back, yep. City buses have two doors and 99.9% .9 of articulated buses have three. But surprising as it might be, that's not the case everywhere. In the rest of the world, 12 meter city buses with a third door behind the rear wheel are actually really common. And the same is true of articulated buses with four doors, again with one behind the rear wheel. As it turns out, there are even some articulated bus variants with two middle doors, meaning they have five doors in total, which is just crazy. 
At the same time, while transit planners and enthusiasts in North America gush over the idea of 100% low floor trams or light rail vehicles, we still order 70% low floor buses, even though 100% low floor buses are common in other parts of the world. If you're wondering how that works, this picture should help. Electric buses are of course also much more common. While you can count the number of major trolley bus systems in North America on one hand, they're all over the place in Europe. And even in cities that don't currently have trolleys, new systems are being set up, and in the meantime, battery electric buses are being ordered. In fact, Amsterdam Schiphol Airport has over 200 electric buses just for the airport, more than most major transit systems in North America, just for the airport. In fact, in most of the that's actually insane. This guy really does know what he's talking about, though. He's going into some serious detail about this. But we really don't invest into the buses at all. And I just don't get why that is. The world. Buses have been getting electrified for a lot longer than here in North America, and by all kinds of different means. And of course, many of these cool features get combined to create incredible high capacity buses that could serve all kinds of purposes that we couldn't even imagine in North America. Bi-articulated electric trolley bus? Yes, oh Switzerland. And for what it's worth, the experience on board buses in Europe and frankly most of the world is also just better. Seats with more padding, better layouts, and higher quality materials are all common. The wayfinding tends to be better, and the ride quality also tends to be a lot better. The first pretty average looking London bus, which I took on my trip to London last year, on the last day of my trip to London actually, put me to sleep almost immediately. It was glorious. So why is it like this? Well, everyone's favorite thing, policies and regulation. In the US, there are Buy America and similar rules, which means that federal dollars are not going to any European buses. And unfortunately, in this case, similar rules actually also do exist in Canada. At the same time, super dated safety regulations also pretty obviously have an impact. I actually think it's worth addressing the idea that North American regulations are somehow safer, because this frequently comes up in transit enthusiast communities, but it's just not the case. Usually the definition of safety used in North America is highly specific and highly pedantic. And while we might score very well for our definition of safety, when you actually look at safety from a perspective the average person would agree makes sense, it's kind of a wash as far as I can tell. At the same time, uh, on another like on another hand, I don't think any American really has too much room to be talking about safety. Um <laughs> like we're not we're probably not the safest country. There's just a lot of stuff going on at all times and a lot of people. It's just too many damn people, bro. <laughs> but with the buses, like I can definitely agree about the ride quality thing. I felt like I did take the bus, you know, pretty routinely a bit when I was when I was younger um to get from school and I just remember like when there was a pothole or not even a pothole, just driving on the street, it's like the bus would like jolt and make this like sound as if the suspension was about to give out or that we had just got into an accident just when like going over over like a little I don't know tiny little bump in the street or something like it just felt very low quality and I can remember like being on the bus and joking around with my friends like pretending that I'm about to fall or like just letting my body get just not fighting the um not resisting at all and let, seeing what would happen if I just sat there limp and literally your body will just get tossed around because that's how bad the buses are i'm not exaggerating about that but when i was in like again i'm comparing to germany and a bit in britain but definitely germany like the bus oh my gosh the bus everything the trams like the, and there's also just so many more options so many more variations like he was explaining like i can't really put my finger on a specific brand or bus i know man is is big um, it, it, man, is that is right, right? That is one of the brands. I'm not sure, but anyways. And for a long time, there appeared to be little questioning as to whether regulations in North America that did things like force trains to be twice as heavy as in Europe and the rest of the world were having a positive or negative impact on the transit experience. A nice parallel to kind of get what I'm talking about are automobile regulations. Part of the reason that trucks and SUVs are so much more common in North America is that our safer regulations don't take into account the safety of people outside of the car. 
So as long as everything inside your enormous truck mostly stays in one piece, no matter what you slam into, you're good. At the end of the day, most of the world moves far more people on public transportation than us, especially on things like buses. And so I think we can accept that maybe the rest of the world knows how to keep people safe. Now at the same time, the archaic rules and regulations of the North American bus market mean that we have only really two major players, Novabus and Newflyer. These two companies do admittedly produce better buses than most of the other remaining manufacturers in North America, but that isn't saying a ton. And both <laughs> of these companies are actually based in Canada, where, shocker, there's a lot less negative stereotyping around bus use. Now, as I mentioned, there are smaller players in the North America. That's a whole other thing that we can get into, like the social side of, of the bus and how important a car is, and, I, and definitely like public transportation is frowned upon in the united states riding the bus is frowned upon it's like you're it's basically like saying i don't have enough money to get a car that's how it's viewed in the united states like standing at a bus stop you just feel like it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel really good because everyone's driving by in cars and it's just it feels like you get the short end of the stick in a sense almost and it, it totally is frowned upon like the United States, it's all, it's all big on, oh, you know, if you have your own ride or whatever. Like, that's just such a, it's so big. I can't really emphasize that enough. So riding the bus or using, ooh, public transport, it's like this nasty thing, you know? And I don't think those same connotations exist in Europe. Public transportation is the norm. Riding the bus, completely normal. People of all different socioeconomic status ride the bus in Europe. It's just and it's just not it's not the same in the United States. So when you throw that into the equation as well, it doesn't exactly subsidize the more buses and development into buses and all that. It's it has the opposite effect if anything. American bus market like Proterra and BYD who produce electric buses, but their buses seem to be of sort of questionable quality, at least based on results in Toronto. There is also Gillig, who only sells buses into the US market, but they also still sell buses that look like this. Now, to be completely fair, most manufacturers do have models which look better. And Novabus in particular does produce some pretty decent looking models, probably influenced by their parent company, Volvo. But even our best buses here in North America would probably look pretty meh on average in Europe. It just seems to be the case that in the rest of the world, there are more buses to pick from. And so Europe and Asia and Latin America and Australia and other places around the world see more competition and better buses. Australia in particular is a pretty great example. They tend to buy their buses from overseas companies and their buses are a lot nicer than the average one seen in North America. In fact, Brisbane is actually even getting beautiful new electric bi-articulated buses for its Metro project. To give some credit to North American transit agencies, some of them have actually tried to import European buses. Viva in York region, for example, has ordered Van Hool buses straight from Belgium, and they're great. They're nicer than the buses that aren't from Belgium. And as it turns out, AC Transit in the Bay Area ordered a ton of Van Hool buses throughout the 2000s. But in recent years, they've fallen in line, and now they purchase standard North American buses. Now you might wonder about prices, I certainly did, and I sort of expected that buses that were nicer would cost at least a little bit more, but it doesn't even seem conclusive that that's the case. I'm guessing that because in the rest of the world there are just so many companies competing for bus orders, prices are still similar, if not lower, because again, more yeah. competition drives down prices and probably gives you better buses too. An interesting situation happened with Alexander Dennis, for example. Famous for their double-decker buses in the UK, years ago they started selling the Enviro 500 model in North America, and they've been wildly successful. So they actually ended up starting up a local production facility to produce buses and sell them directly into the North American market. And now they've actually been bought out by Canadian manufacturer New Flyer, which I can only hope will lead to New Flyer getting some influences from Alexander Dennis. Now what's so frustrating about all of this is that the actual drivetrains used on most North American buses are the exact same as the ones that would be used in- Oh my god, it would just be so easy. Like, why can't we just collaborate? I don't get it. Why can't we just buy them up? This the whole American, oh, we have to make- build in America or keep the- It's all about keeping stuff in the- in the country, really. And I get it, but really, like, we can't, come on. Just seeing that video in Brisbane, too. That street. 
It looks so modern. Like right here, look at this. That looks so like refreshing compared to what I'm used to in the United States. Very rare do you see a street like this. Looks like they got a bike lane and then, oh, they're just better, bro. They're better than us in that. Ones that would be used in other parts of the world, typically built by third party companies. So the buses actually operate much as they would in other parts of the world, simply with a less nice, rattly bus shell around them. The idea that a bus will be adequate as long as it has the required number of seats, fuel economy, and keeps running for the required number of years is exactly why we have so many problems with public transit in North America. To say that user experience has taken the back seat would be an understatement. This approach gives transit agencies less flexibility, costs them more, and creates a worse experience for passengers as well as probably operators. So maybe the answer to better buses in North America is to just do what the rest of the world does. Thanks for watching. Oh my. Wow. RM Transit. This guy just killed it. Wow. I mean, that was that was an amazing video. Like he really really destroyed that. Makes so much more sense now. I mean, I kind of had figured it was something along <laughs> those lines like of of the reasons why, but I don't know if this will ever change, guys. It's it's also and then you there's other things to consider as well. We're more geographically separated than singular countries in Europe. That's a fact. So buses, you know, but still, like within cities, there's no reason for our bus public transport systems to be as poor as they are within, like in proximity to cities. Okay, I get it. If you're in the middle of Idaho or whatever, I'm not expecting there to be like a, a super fast train. Like there could be a train too. They could just run like a big train, but we're not going to get into that. But I'm not expecting there to be buses in like small town. You know, that's not going to happen. But like, you know, Washington, D.C., like you guys could maybe be a little bit better just a little bit anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed this video for those of you living in Europe which I'm sure is a good amount of people watching this video enjoy your buses guys I want to enjoy them when I'm back over because it is really nice like that that's something you can take for granted just to to not have to drive everywhere or think about that all the time so yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one peace